Hello everyone, my name is Ivo and welcome to Cooking with the Koyas. Today we're going to make an Italian treat. It's called Zeppoli and Zeppoli are made in Italy, throughout Italy, any time is a festive season. Christmas especially, Easter, but any festive season you can rest assured they're making Zeppoli in Italy somewhere and we're going to make them right here today, right now. So I have one cup of warm water, about 80 degrees, 15 seconds in the microwave and it's good to go. And to the, to the water, I'm going to add one teaspoon of yeast. And I'm just using uh, instant, instant yeast today, but you could use the traditional yeast as well. They both work fine. So one teaspoon of yeast and to the water, yeast water, I'm gonna add one teaspoon, level teaspoon of sugar. Okay, so now we're gonna let this sit for about two to five minutes. So we just wanna activate the yeast. That's all we're doing at this stage here right now. All right, now while that's being activated, it's gonna sit for a couple minutes. I have here half a cup of raisins. So there's three different ways you can make this recipe. Plain as is, or you could add raisins, or you could add anchovies. So there's a, a regular version, let's call it a sweet version, and a savory version. The sweet version being with the raisins, the savory version with the anchovies. I've opted for the raisins today, but by all means, if you like anchovies, this recipe is great with anchovies too. So to the raisins, um, I like to soak them. So we're gonna let them soak in water for, you know, the two to five minutes while our yeast is being activated. Acu uh, activated. <laughs> our, our raisins are gonna start to be uh, hydrated. Okay, now I have here two cups of flour. And you know me, I measure everything. So that's actually 266 grams of all-purpose white flour. And to that, I'm going to add one teaspoon of salt. Now, I also sifted my flour earlier. I like to sift my flour. Um, I always like to sift my flour. So there we go. One teaspoon of salt has been added. So our flour is ready. We're gonna sit tight for two to five minutes and let this activate and come right back at you. Okay, so it's been about five minutes or so and now I've remembered to turn my lapel mic on so you may be able to hear me a little bit better. I do that all the time. Okay, so uh, my yeast water has become a little bit foamy now. Uh, change the texture a little bit. So we're just gonna pour that in to our flour. Get all that beautiful yeast water out of there. Okay, that's done. We're gonna take our uh, raisins and just drain them. Doesn't matter if they're still, um, you know, still wet here, a little bit of residual water, perfectly fine. So we're gonna add our raisins. Uh, we are also gonna add one teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil. And that's gonna go into the mix as well. There we go. And now quite simply, we're just gonna take our raisins and our water and our flour and mix it all together. And you can see that it's relatively dry it's a two to one ratio, as you've probably figured out, <laughs> water to flour. But basically all you wanna do here now is just incorporate the flour and the water and the raisins, get everything mixed in together. And I like to use a spatula, you can use a wooden spoon if you like, and if you really wanna have fun, go ahead, use your hands. <laughs> but basically, you just want everything mixed together nicely. There we go. All right, so this is gonna form our, our dough. So because of that, we now have to let this sit for, oh, an hour and a half to two hours, anywhere in that range. I'll keep an eye on it and we'll see how, uh, how it develops, but we're gonna, we're gonna cover that. In fact, I think what I'll do is I'll put, a, I'll put a piece of plastic on first and then I'll cover it, but we're gonna let this sit for an hour and a half to two hours. So I've let it go the full two hours. Let's take a, oh yeah, take a look at this. Oh, that has risen very, very nicely. It's nice and bubbly and airy. Absolutely perfect. This is gonna make a great Zeppeli. Okay, let's make our way over to the stove. I have got some grapeseed oil here, but you can use, of course, any vegetable oil that you want because these are going to be basically deep fried. And of course, if you have a deep fryer, by all means, use the deep fryer. Okay, there we go. That's plenty. Let's bring this up to high. And I'm gonna let it come up to about 360, 370 degrees. 
before we start to fry. Take a look here. Okay, we are at temperature, so I'm gonna just lower down to medium high, and now we can start frying. So, another beauty of this is don't worry how much batter you get or the shape. In fact, it, none of that really, really matters. So that's another fun part about this making Zeppeli is you can make them as big or as small as you want and just put them in and let them take the shape that they want to take. And I'm not going to overcrowd. You don't want them to touch together, but by the same token, I want to get as many in there as I can at a time. So let's try four. There we go. Now you're going to want to boil these or <laughs> you're going to want you're going to want to fry these until they turn a nice golden brown color. So I think I'm going to do four at a time here right now. You can see they're already starting to turn a little bit, which is fine. I'll let them just keep cooking. And again, I've got my, meat, my heat on medium high. Now these are what I'm going to call your basic Zeppoli. Uh, there are different recipes, of course. You can make Zeppoli with you can make it with ricotta cheese, you can make them with potato, and then of course there's the infamous San Giuseppe Zeppoli, which are the ones that are filled with custard, uh, typically made on St. Joseph's Day. And I've got a good friend of mine, Joe, and he loves to have them on every San Giuseppe day. All right, so no, okay, they're still, still kind of white, so we're gonna let them continue to fry until they get that nice golden brown color. Let's take a look. Okay, see that one's just nice little golden brown there. Same with that one, that's, that's good. That one's good, and look at the shapes. And that makes it even more fun, the different shapes that you come up with. It just adds to the fun of making Zeppoli. Okay, that's the perfect golden brown that you want. And like I say, turn it over and next year the other side cooks the same there we go that's perfect we'll just drain off a little bit of that oil looks like i lost a couple of raisins there we go nice golden brown color oh my these are going to be really really tasty and that one too nice golden brown okay and i'm putting them on a on a plate with uh with a paper towel just to take up some of the oil okay and i can see my raisins floating around in there Let's get some more batter. I try not to let the dough go too, or the oil go too long without any dough in there. Otherwise, it'll overheat. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that oil is really, really being aggressive right now. I might have to turn the heat down just a tad. Let me see if I can get a small one in here, an extra small one. There we go. Perfect. All right, I'll just put the heat down just a little bit. There we go. All right, same thing now. We're going to keep doing all of this until all the batter uh, is totally done and all of these have turned a nice golden brown. The last batch is upon us. Look at the shape of this one. Oh, I love that one. Look at that. That's fantastic, okay? Uh, let's just put the heat right down because these are basically... They're done. This one's done. This little guy I put in at the very end when I scraped out my bowl. He might need an extra couple seconds. Okay, drain a little bit of that. Look at that, that's gonna work out perfectly. Okay, that's enough of that. Oh my, yes, there we go. All right, let's just take that right off the heat. Let it cool down. So to dress these, we are gonna use some good old fashioned icing sugar. You could use regular sugar if you want as well, but I think icing sugar, uh, A, it's got the flavor, and B, it's got the extra nice color that just makes the Zeppoli look fantastic. And it adds that nice little extra sweetness, which is just great. Now, if you were making the savory Zeppoli with the anchovy, then instead of using the icing sugar, um, or the powdered sugar, what you would do is you would use salt. Okay, that's the only difference. And again, if you also made these plain without the, uh, the raisins, same thing, you would use the, uh, the powdered icing sugar or uh, regular sugar and you're good to go. You know what, I'm gonna add just a little bit more. There we go. Reminds me a little bit of eating beignets, beignets in, in New Orleans. Okay, 
lots of powdered sugar. Oh my, take a look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That is really, really super, super nice. Okay, time for the taste test. As you know, my absolute favorite part, look at these Zeppeli. Oh my goodness. These are gonna be nothing short of fantastic. I will, I will be conservative and just take this little small one here. Mmm, mm-hmm. See the inside? Chewy, doughy, and sweet. What a combination. What an Italian treat. Zeppoli. No need to wait for an occasion to make them. Of course, make them anytime. But if you've got a holiday upon you, these are fantastic to make. And whether you're an adult or a child, no matter who you are, you're going to absolutely love these because they are fantastic. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you give it a try. And until next time, bon appetito. Mm -hmm. I think I'll have a bigger one next. This one. Oh, that's a nice one.